Hello, my friends. It's Nick, the ASMR nerd. And today, Keepmas continues, Keepsember, whatever you want to call it, our keyboard rich final month of 2022 continues. Today, I've got something really special to show you, so I'm glad you're here. This is no ordinary mechanical keyboard that I'm going to unbox here today. This is the Melgeek Pixel, which is so new, so brand spanking new, that it's not even available yet beyond ordering on the Kickstarter. But this is a, a pre-production version that I'm going to be sharing with you guys here today. And actually, as of the time of recording, the Kickstarter for this board is still live, but by the time you see this video, it will have ended. Um, but I'm sure there will be a way for you to order this, and I will ensure that there is a link down below this video for you to do so, because I think you might want to. So the Metal Geek Pixel, that's an intriguing name. What makes this keyboard special? Well, it is a building block keyboard, which is to say it's basically Lego compatible. I'm not supposed to say the word Lego, or at least I'm not allowed to use it in the title because technically Metal Geek doesn't have like the official Lego license, but it uses bricks, as they say, building bricks, to, uh, you know, basically allow for Lego compatibility and the entire bezel around this thing, the keys and the keycaps and the whole shebang is customizable with bricks, whether that's the bricks that come with this thing or whether it's your official Lego. Uh, but here in the package, we will be using legally distinct building bricks, yes. Um, but uh, this is the first time I've ever encountered a keyboard like this, and I think it is super darn cool. What a neat idea. Um, as I said, this is currently uh, in the Kickstarter phase, but uh, you guys should be able to order it somewhere. I will include a link down below. Uh, so that you can you can do so if you're interested. The uh, super early bird price for this thing is $200. Um, and it'll probably be a little bit more than that after the Kickstarter. But uh, you'll just have to see when you click through that link down in the video description. But it's not just a gimmick keyboard either. It comes with all kinds of other desirable features. It has uh, wireless enter, um, in the form of 2.4 gigahertz connectivity and Bluetooth, as well as USB-C wired mode. It has uh, some brand new custom switches, the Pixel L linear switches and the Pixel T tactile switches, which are a collaboration between Kale which is a very well-known switch manufacturer, and Melgeek, um, uh, specifically for this board. Uh, it comes with a gasket mount design, so it should have a, a very nice feeling and sounding typing experience. And I believe it when Melgeek says that it's going to feel and sound great because their uh, Mojo 84, which I unboxed earlier in the, in the year, was one of my favorite keyboards of this year, uh, earning an honorable mention in my video uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago. So um, I'm very keen to see what Melgeek has done with the Pixel. This is what it shipped in. I suspect there's maybe a, a nicer box inside here, but I wanted to show you guys this because even the shipping box has some fun graphics on it. Mechanical keyboard, Pixel Fun World, it says up here. Big Minds, here's a Melgeek logo in a pixelated form. 
Bell Geek Pixel Small Dots. <laughs> so, um, let's see about opening this thing up. How are we going to do that? Does it open on the back here? I think it opens from the end. So let's let's see if we can open it from this end. Where we have the Metal Geek logo once again. I'm intentionally not showing you the back because it has my shipping info on it, but there's really nothing interesting there anyway. So you're not missing out. Geek certainly knows their way around a, key, a keyboard, and uh, so I'm very excited to see what they're doing with this very unique design. Um, and this is a pretty heavy box, and I know there are a few different versions and colorways uh, of this thing available, so um, as well as some add ons with some. Uh, like blank keycaps that you can order, um, some extra bricks and things like that. So I really don't know what to expect in here, but we're going to find out. I'm not even sure if this has the linear or the tactile pixel switches. Let's see. Look at this box, you guys. Okay. Holy cow, this presentation is remarkable. Put that there. This is just, like I said, just the shipping box. But Metal Geek is one of those keyboard companies that really pays attention to the details of their presentation. And so it shouldn't surprise me, I suppose, that this looks... It feels so nice. Um, so here we have uh, the actual product box. It says Metal Geek over here. We have some primary colors up here. A canvas. It says here, open next page. I'm not quite sure how, how this works. Am I supposed to? What? No way. That's way too cool. Check it out. So it says here, pixel, small dots, big minds. I see. Small dots, big minds. That must be their, their slogan for this thing. Uh, in a big, shiny pixel logo on the front there. It's behind a plastic window. And then when you slide this where it says open next page, look what happens. We see the keyboard, and then this is the concept of the bezel around the board with all these pixelated designs that you can make out of bricks. And here's the keyboard itself. Um, I think it's a, a 10 keyless type layout. Certainly looks that way here, or thereabouts, anyway. Um, that's so neat. That's I should not be so amused, but that's really cool. <laughs> that's really neat, you guys. All right, uh, let's do another quick look around here just to see what we've got. Canvas, it says there. Got the Mel Geek logo on the end. Um, and on the back, Mel Geek. Pixel, product name, Pixel Mechanical Keyboard. 3100 milliamp hour battery, which should be good for a while of wireless use. Uh, made of ABS uh, plastic, ABS and polycarbonate, because it's got clear tops to the keycaps, as you'll see. Compatible with Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Linux, Android, USB Type C and a variety of other information, contact information from Mel Geek, Bluetooth, uh, all that kind of stuff. 
product weight is over a kilogram, 1200 grams. That checks out, this is very heavy. Okay. So. Very fun presentation. Probably the most fun I've ever had with a keyboard box, I have to say. Well done to whoever designed this. <laughs> Milk Geek. All right, let's pop this thing open. So it's got a magnetic closure here, which is nice. The top flips open. Okay, what is happening here? Mel Geek Pixel product manual. Welcome to the Pixel world. They are really leaning into this aesthetic. Small dots, big minds. We can see the layout here, which is uh, a pretty standard looking uh, 10 keyless type layout. Um, but, um, you know, it's a, a little different. We have a loan function key up here, um, which means that the top row is a little more compact. But um, it's nice because you get all your function keys. You get your nav cluster. You get your dedicated arrow keys and all that kind of good stuff. And you might notice over here on the right is a spot for the USB receiver. All this blank space around is where you can create your designs with bricks. Um, this is kind of fun up here too. It's just some more design. This is a nice padded, uh, surface, unless there's something more in here, but I think it's just, I guess it's, it's the back side of whatever's going on on the front there, right? So, but, uh, the presentation is very nice and quite consistent throughout. Really lovely. Okay, so let's lift up the manual here, which is enormous, I guess. It's one, one big piece of cardboard here. So here we have some specs and information again. Uh, it looks like it's mostly bilingual. So we have Chinese and English uh, across most of it. I will remind you again, this is an early release of the product. So some of this is liable to change in the final shipping uh, version, but um, we've got some layout information here, uh, indicator LEDs, and secondary function layer stuff. We'll put that aside for now, just over there. I think these are bricks. I think these are bricks, you guys. Contained in little boxes that look like bricks. And the keyboard itself is here. Nestled within this nicely crinkly plastic bag. aside just for the moment. Uh, let's put it over here. Um, but uh, we have some other stuff to look at first, briefly. So uh, let's pull this stuff out of here. So this looks like it might contain accessories. It's an accessory box. really nicely presented one. So let's open it up. Okay. Apparently I'm just ripping this thing. Maybe it's supposed to go this way. I guess it could go either way, but we'll do it this way. Uh, here's the USB receiver. Is 
is even themed, uh, which is fantastic. It's got the little studs on it there, so you're never going to mix it up for a USB receiver from a, a different keyboard. The whole thing is in white. Really excellent attention to detail aesthetically from Melgeek here. Here we have uh, some rubber feet, presumably. So there is some assembly required here, which, you know, that's fair. It's themed after a building toy, but these are, you know, rubberized feet to prevent slippage. And honestly, it looks like you can probably put them wherever you want because they've got little stud pattern on the bottom so you can position them how you like. That's excellent. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's everything in there. This might also be the nicest sounding packaging of any keyboard I've unboxed. Um, so we've got a package of little white stud bricks of the square variety. Quite a few of them. And a keycap key puller uh, that is not themed. <laughs> That's the one thing that appears to not be themed here just your basic wire style keycap puller, but better than the loop style. I do appreciate the wire style. And this USB cable, look at it, you guys. It's got the bricks on either end with the studs. It's got these wonderful primary colors. And then it's this really fun ribbon style cable in brilliant blue. Uh, We've got this kind of primary color theme going on here with the blue, yellow, and red, and a white hook and loop fastener. But the attention to detail here is remarkable. They could have just cut corners, used a typical cable, a braided cable, a standard USB uh, receiver, but they really went for it aesthetically, which is fantastic. That's so cool. And the feed that can be moved around. Brilliant idea. And then these must be other kinds of bricks. I'm going to presume. So here's a collection of uh, two, two block size bricks with studs on them. Uh, still in white. We must have some other colors in here somewhere. Again, I'm not sure what colorway we have been given here, so... Um, oh, I guess maybe... Maybe it's canvas. Maybe that's the colorway. Because it says canvas in a couple places here. Maybe that's what that means. That would make sense. <laughs> okay. So here we have a whole bunch of options. We have black, red, and purpley mauve kind of color for our pixels. I think that's purpley. I'm colorblind, so sometimes it's hard for me to tell. But that looks purpley to me. sounds here. And last but not least, whatever's going on in here. Okay, here we have, oh, ASMR Nerd Green, my favorite color. Could probably make my logo with that. 
um, a pale blue, and an orange. So, like I said, best sounding keyboard I've ever unboxed. And I think that's everything. Yeah, this liner doesn't appear to come out, so. Uh, but that's a lot. We've got a lot of colors to work with, friends. Uh, so let's put this aside for now and bring out the board itself. So here is our pixel. with letters and uh, and such uh, legends already on the keycaps. Uh, also, I'd be remiss if I didn't make some sounds with this thing because it's got a lovely crinkle to it. Listen. layout uh, ANSI layout we have the, the, the typical North American style enter here um, our nav cluster over here our dedicated arrow keys these studs are indicator lights and then we have our F row which is slightly compressed which allows us the function button up here which is very nice um, Gosh, there's a lot to, to look at here, guys. It's a beautiful keyboard. Uh, it's so unique. So we come around uh, the back here. We have some bricks along the back, some studs. We have a USB Type-C connector. We have a switch, which I assume switches between wired and wireless. Indeed. When we flip that, uh, on comes the lights. So, we'll, oh, it's actually a three position switch, probably for uh, USB, uh, you know, wired mode, then the receiver, and then the Bluetooth. So, but yeah, we clearly have an indicator light situation on the back here, which is great. There it is. Um, earlier we were talking about the storage spot for the USB receiver, and that is over here underneath these bricks, I believe. 
There we go. Uh, let's just there. So uh, we have a, a layer of transparent bricks, these flat pieces that sits over top of the base that's in white here. And here's a spot for our USB receiver. So that can go right in there quite happily. We can tuck it away. Like so. That's great. Um, around the sides, we have, I believe, more uh, LED lights here. Let's just flip the switch. Yep, there you go. So they come on. And the same situation over here. Nothing around the front. It's just very clean. And then around the back side, literally nothing except a blank canvas for us to decorate, should we want to. All the studs. So it sounds pretty dense, actually. Um, which isn't too surprising because A, there's big batteries in here, and B, uh, they use uh, poron foam and silicone dampening to control the sound on this thing. Uh, the keycaps, of course, are quite something. Um, and I believe we can pull them off, so let's just take off the escape key. Oh, the switch came out with it, so yes, this is also a hot swap board. Um, if you would like to um, uh, put on some some of your, your own switches, you are welcome to do so. The PCB underneath is a brilliant orange, which is pretty fun. And it looks like it has uh, south-facing five-pin support. So here we've got one of uh, these really unique-looking kale pixel switches, uniquely made for this board. This must be the Pixel T because it's tactile. Listen to it. It has uh, Kale's signature box style stem, which uh, improves stability, and the structure within improves dust resistance as well, which is nice. Um, you can see the south facing portion uh, has a clear polycarbonate lens to allow the LED light to shine through, but um, at least I assume that's what that is. Or you know what? Maybe it doesn't. I mean, it does have that lens, but I don't actually see an LED on the board there. I wonder if maybe, maybe they they opted not to have LEDs under the switches because the keycaps are opaque, right? With this, this brick here. So maybe it's not backlit, but rather just edge lit. That could be the case. Um, but uh, we have the lens nonetheless. If you did want to use this on a board with LEDs, you would get shine through there. But the rest of the top housing is this green, uh, I don't know if it's polycarbonate or something else. And then the bottom is this matte white. Um, but it's, it's a pleasing tactile switch. There's no spring ping there, and it's got a fairly strong tactility to it, but it's not too loud. I mean, it's not silent, but it's it's pretty reasonable, actually. So uh, that's that's very interesting. <laughs> I guess that that must be the uh, Pixel L switch. But then we've also got this situation where if we wanted, 
we could swap the tops of these around, which is supported also by the software. So uh, if you wanted to rebind the layout into, I don't know, Dvorak or something like that, you could do that and you could just swap the tops of the caps onto other ones. Uh, this is, of course, a clear polycarbonate. It is this rectangular type brick. The top has an indentation, so it is quite scooped right there. And uh, it kind of cups the finger, which is really nice. And then here, of course, is the brick with the cross uh, Cherry MX style stem. So that's all pretty straightforward. And I should be able to pop this back in here and uh, pop this back on here. You can see that the legends themselves are pixelated. So if we look at our arrow keys over here, for example, you can see they've got this pixel aesthetic and the colors on the board for the legends match the colors that we've been given for our bricks. So this is a blank canvas for us to play around with, make some fun designs. So let's do that. Let's make some kind of design. Um, but what is the question? I kind of like the idea of trying to make my, like my channel logo, but I don't know that I have the artistic ability to do that. Um, but you know what? Let's, let's just do this anyway. Let's just, it's very crinkly, so I'm gonna just snip this here. most ASMR keyboard I've ever unboxed, you guys. Well, even if we can't actually make my full logo, maybe we can do something kind of along those lines. So let's get the black out because this will be part of the logo. So these go on pretty well. 
but they come off pretty easily as well, which I'm actually really glad to see. I was worried I was going to have to struggle to, to pull off the, the pixels. Okay, that's an S. It's an ugly S, but it's an S. I was not prepared for this. I am not sufficiently artistic for this, you guys. An M. Hmm. How should the M go? Maybe like this. And then there. Maybe we can put one extra there, like so. It's a very wide M. Hopefully we have room for our R. I think I'll have to workshop this a little bit. <laughs> and then an R over here. It's really the S that's the problem. The rest of it is actually just fine. I would say. Uh, what if we make our R a little wider just to... to uh, Actually, our R is going to look a little goofy too, isn't it? I feel like I didn't plan the R very well either. Okay, uh, change plans. The R is going to... This one doesn't want to come off. Almost. Yeah, I was saying they're easy to pull off. There we go. What if I make the R a little shorter? Or not quite as wide. It's going to be a really tiny R. There. A, S, M, R. It nearly works out. <laughs> I mean, it does work out. It fits. Uh, but the S is just a little tall. But that's okay. That's okay. What if we made each one just a little taller? What if we did this? What if we extended them all just to... Oh, this might look really weird. I don't know, you guys. A, S, M. What if we do that? It looks a little better, actually. Doesn't it? I think it does. Like so. That's pretty good. I think that's pretty solid for a first attempt. Now, let's fill it in with the greens because that is true to my color scheme. Not sure that we're going to have quite enough green to do all of that, but yeah, we'll try. Why not? If we have to frame it with another color, like white, that's okay. I'm not sure how many of each of these pixels there is, each color, but it matters not. But as you can see, the cool thing about this is that you can put whatever you want on here. I'm sure many of you are much more talented than I am when it comes to pixel art. And I'm sure you can come up with all kinds of beautiful designs that will look amazing on your keyboard. You could do some pixel art from your favorite game. Uh, you could do a little Pokemon sprite or a little Link or something like that. Or, uh, I don't know, a Pokeball or a little Mario, you know, all kinds of stuff. You know, I don't want to jinx it, but I think we might have just enough to fill in the area that we're trying to do here. More or less. And then we could surround it with maybe red, because red is part of my color scheme. It's like I said, an accent color. be 
pretty close, you guys. But I think we will have enough. Hopefully you can see this. Here, let me turn it back this way. You can see more of the keyboard. As I do it. Because it's a really cool looking keyboard. It's super neat. I've never seen anything that looks like this before. Um, Metal Geek is certainly pushing the boundaries with their designs, and I love that. I really do. Oh yeah, we got plenty. No problem. You guys, check it out. Oh, I say that looks pretty good. ASMR. Nobody else in the world has a keyboard like this that says ASMR in the ASMR Nerd Channel colors on it. You could, if you were to buy this keyboard, you could make this design. But I reckon I'm the first to do this. Also, you might have some other ideas about what you want on your keyboard. Maybe ASMR nerd is not what you want. I think if I wanted to put nerd over here, I would need to uh, use some other colors, but that's okay. We do have lots of other options here. Let's just finish it off with a, a red border. So I think that'll look nice. Or, nah, you know what? I think it looks pretty good as it is. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll leave it like that. Um, but, of course, uh, you could use your own Lego bricks. You could use them on the top here, you could use them on the back here, and uh, you could even use them on the sides here, if you really wanted. Plenty of spots for uh, Lego or bricks to go. And, like I said, we've got all these other colors as well, in addition to uh, all these white bricks that they gave us, uh, which we have not used, and the, um, uh, where are those? These guys. Uh, which you could use to build up if you wanted. I mean, you could totally build 3D stuff on here. You could put mini figs along the top of here if you wanted. You could have like a whole crew of mini figs around, which would be super cool. Um, all kinds of options there. And let's just see, how does this look when we plug it in? So the USB-C end will go over here. I'll just leave it wrapped up for now, but you can just see aesthetically. That's so good. That's so good. Doesn't that look awesome? I freaking love it, you guys. <laughs> this is such a cool design. Um, so, uh, really fun. Really, really, really cool stuff. I love what they're doing here. Um, but, I know, I know, it's a little gimmicky if the keyboard itself isn't solid. So let's see. Let's just do a little test here. I will do a full typing test shortly, but let's just do a little test and see how this, how this feels right now. Let's... sounds great. It sounds really good. Uh, of course, as I always say, the stabilized keys are the trick. Um, you really want the stabilized keys to sound good for a high quality typing experience. So that's the backspace, enter, right shift, left shift, and space bar. So let's give each of those a test in turn here, shall we? We'll start with backspace. Amazing, fantastic, super well tuned. I assume we have standard cherry style plate mount stabilizers under here, but we will take a look to find out in a moment. But whatever's under there, it's definitely nicely lubed and well controlled. So enter. 
exemplary, like perfect, just about. Shift. Amazing. Left shift. Incredible. And spacebar. That's an amazing spacebar, you guys. They don't really get any better than that from the factory. It's solid. It's stable. There's no tick. There's no rattle. There's no clack. It's just... wonderful foggy feel. Um, wow. Really impressed with the stabs on this thing. Uh, and I shouldn't be too surprised. Melgeek did a fantastic job on the Mojo 84. They clearly know what they're doing when it comes to factory tuning their stabilizers, but... Like, listen to that thing. That's amazing. Uh, wow. Really impressive. Okay. Well, um, let's just take a quick look under, just to look at the stabs. I want to see what they're doing there, and then we will get to a full, a full on typing test uh, in not too long. I promise. I know you guys are probably eager for it. I certainly am. Okay, so. Our backspace key comes off just the way we would expect it. Once again, we have, uh, you know, a removable top. And if you want, as an extra, I believe you can get clear, unlabeled tops if you just wanted no legends. Uh, underneath, we once again have our, uh, our pixel T switch. And then, you know, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with the stabilizers there, but they must be lubed. Just trying to get it in such a light. Yeah, I can see some lubricant down on the wire, but it's just a, a standard Cherry MX style plate mount stabilizer, which you could easily remove or replace should you wish to. But I think part of the what, what makes the stabilizer work so well, too, is the gasket mount system that they've got going on here because it makes for a really nice flexy kind of bottom out. Um, but I'm impressed that I'm particularly impressed that everything sounds so good because we've got different kinds of materials at play here. We've got this kind of layered switch thing. Uh, these are not standard profile keycaps, so the sound signature is going to be different. Uh, the whole construction of the keyboard is just so different than your average board, so there is a lot of opportunity here for things to sound and feel janky and not solid, especially because it's all modular, right? The pieces, they come out, as we know. Um, and... Uh, you know, there is a lot of opportunity there for rattle or a lot of opportunity for things just to sound or feel cheap, but it, it doesn't. It sounds as good as any anything, really, I've ever uh, heard, and it feels as good as any, any board I've ever put my fingers on. Now, uh, the profile of the switches might take a little getting used to, or the, the keycaps, I should say. You know, they, they are, it's a flat profile, so there's no sculpting, um, you know, uh, the rows don't raise as they go up or anything. Um, but the little scoops for your fingers, they are very satisfying, I will say. So, well, my friends, uh, I guess we'd better give this thing a proper typing test, eh? See how it sounds. Um, I might turn off the lights here for a moment and just look at the RGB uh, in the dark uh, before we get to uh, the, um, 
the typing test. And if I think it's worth showing you guys, we'll do that next. Otherwise, we'll just move right on to the typing test. But at any rate, uh, this thing is super cool so far. I'm looking forward to actually using it. So there are a few different lighting options, and I figured we would go through them quickly here. Um, there is no backlight, as we said earlier, but we do, of course, have the lighting strips, the edge lighting, one on each side, and then one along the back here, which you can hopefully see casting light there. Nothing along the front, but um, the ones on the other sides do cast a nice amount of light onto your desk. They're actually pretty bright. Um, oh, this is a, a good uh, feature to point out. Uh, after about a minute or two of inactivity, the lights will turn off and uh, the keyboard will go into a rest mode, uh, but any key press will bring it right back. There are lights again. That's only in wireless modes, of course, uh, which I have it in right now, as indicated by this green indicator light right here. Uh, the light next to it is for battery charge, to the left of it here. Um, to the right of it is caps lock, and to the right of that is scroll lock. So that's pretty straightforward, and I do love the design. The little studs uh, are a fantastic way to do those indicator lights. Um, as for the edge lighting, we do have some control over that. With the function key held down, we can press Q to turn it on or off, toggle it on and off. Uh, we can press W to change the mode. So here we have, a, I guess, a rainbow wave kind of effect. We've got some kind of shooting light. Um, and then within each mode, we can also use, I believe, R and T to change color. And uh, one of these is hue, one of these is saturation. But there's a few different color options, uh, R through U. So that gives us a fair bit of control over what we're seeing on the sides of the board. Uh, let's just step through these modes. There's kind of a bouncing back and forth mode. Uh, this is some kind of multicolor breathing mode. Kind of fun. Uh, this is just flashing through colors. We've got some like back and forth, like blinkers on a car or something. Oops. Um, e just cycles through the effects the other way. We've got, okay, individual rainbows. Rainbows per stud. Rainbow colors. Uh, this looks like to be a solid, just a solid color mode. Uh, this is a cycling through or breathing, perhaps. That's a breathing mode. And then we're back to, I think this was the original cycling through colors. I kind of like this one, this rainbow wave mode. Let's keep it on that for now. Hopefully you can see all that well enough on the side here. I know that it's probably a little bit blown out, but uh, in person the colors are quite vivid um, and uh, the lights are quite bright. So you can of course see them casting light on my hands there. That's why I keep putting my hands down there. So you can see the light. Uh, okay, so that is that. Um, there are other secondary functions as well for media control. Uh, function enter uh, to play pause. Uh, function arrow keys for um, volume and skip track. Um, it's a little bit strange getting used to the function key being up here. I'm used to it being down here on the bottom row, but uh, it works just fine for what you need it for. So that's basically it when it comes to the lighting and secondary function layers. Uh, there is, of course, the option to select your various Bluetooth devices. This keyboard can be uh, connected to up to different eight or up to eight different Bluetooth devices, um, which can be recalled uh, with the one through function one through eight. And um, that's a lot. That's a lot of devices to be able to save. Usually you're lucky if you get three. So eight is great. 
um, in terms of the battery life of this board. I've been really impressed with it. I've been using it almost exclusively in wireless mode and it has been uh, a champ. It just keeps going for days at a time. So um, it's probably because it doesn't have uh, a, you know extravagant backlight. It's just these edge lights. Um, and so uh, the side lights don't consume as much power as a full backlight. All right, well, we've talked a bit about the lighting. I think it's time to type on this thing now. So what you guys will be hearing here is, of course, the uh, Pixel, uh, the Kale Pixel uh, T switches, so the tactile ones. And um, it's got a really nice, soft, thocky typing sound, as you will hear. And then, of course, these fascinating keycaps that they've got on here, which um, well, we'll talk about after the typing test. I'll give you a little more of my usage impressions um, after the typing test. But for now, let's listen to the Melgeek Pixel.
chance to see and hear the Mel Geek Pixel in action. What do you guys think about its sound? I think it sounds really nice. I think it has a lovely, soft, thocky sound to it. That is no doubt largely in part, or largely due to the um, uh, gasket mount structure that lies within, which gives uh, the PCB and the plate uh, additional flex and allows for that softer bottom out. Some people might find it too soft. Some people might want a bit more clack with their thock. But if you are a fan of soft thocky boards, then I think you will like this very much. And of course, the switches uh, are also a component of that sound. I mean, the whole thing is really the whole keyboard contributes to the sound signature. But I think it feels solid and uh, pleasant to type on. Uh, I will say the keycaps definitely take some getting used to. And initially, I did find myself making more errors with these keycaps um, just because uh, they're a bit closer together than I'm used to uh, in terms of the tops here. And they're more scooped than I'm used to as well. Um, it, you know, each individual one has the little scoop for the fingertips. And then, of course, they're not stepped. They're just a flat profile. So all of those things do take a bit of adjustment, or at least they did for me. But once you get used to it, uh, it types quite fine. Um, and the keycaps uh, feel um, nice under the fingers. I was a little worried that they were going to get really greasy or something like that because they're this clear polycarbonate. But uh, so far, so good. They feel all right still. And I've been using it for a while now. So, um, and like I said, the actual typing feel uh, when the switches bottom out uh, feels good. And that sound is, is really pleasantly thocky. Uh, and uh, I definitely recommend this for someone who likes a softer typing feel and sound. Much like the Mo uh, Mojo 84 that I reviewed from Belgeek or unboxed from Belgeek previously. Similarly soft typing sound with a probably similar gasket mount structure. Aside from uh, that, it's been uh, really a pleasure to use. Um, it's a lot of fun just to have it on my desk. I just like looking at it. I just like the aesthetics of it. I mean, really, this board is all about the aesthetics, and it is so committed to the Lego aesthetic, um, pardon me, the uh, legally distinct brick-compatible aesthetic that um, you can't help but uh, but love the thing. It really is maybe the most fun keyboard I've ever used in that regard. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the wireless connectivity has been excellent. I've never dropped uh, anything. Uh, I've not noticed any latency. It works well in wired mode as well, though. And uh, overall, uh, it's been quite performant. So once you adjust to the, the keycaps, and, uh, you know, if you're uh, happy with that softer typing feel, then uh, it offers uh, a really solid typing experience. And that is really everything I have to say about the Melgeek Pixel. Uh, it is a pretty remarkable board uh, in terms of its aesthetics, in terms of its commitment to its design, um, and then Melgeek manages to pull it off with uh, really solid execution of the typing fundamentals. Like I said, that nice, soft, thocky, bottom-out feel. Um, and, uh, you know, great switches to boot. So um, if you are interested in picking up the Melgeek Pixel, there will be a link down below this video. Uh, I do believe at the time of this publication or this video being published, the Kickstarter will have just ended. I think there will probably still be a way for you to pre-order this thing. I'm hoping. <laughs> so I'll put that link down there. If not, I will just link to the Kickstarter for the time being. And hopefully there will be further updates there for where you can pre-order it uh, once they move on to the next phase of production. But uh, all that will be down there for you. All right. Well, 
uh, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed this very unique keyboard, uh, unlike any I've ever unboxed or used before. Uh, a big thank you, of course, to Melgeek for sending over this pixel for us to take a look at and a listen to here today. And of course, big thanks to all of you for watching. I hope you found it informative. I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Bye for now, my friends.